ันเทาดำไปเอาอันเทาลอยหาไปเอาลูกอุ้มบีออกไปอีกแล้วไปชวนเทาดำเทาดำแล้วก็มาออกไปอีกมาแล้วก็อันเทาเทาเทาลอยว่าว่าที่ทับอยู่ในหันเทาว่าเทาดำว่าทับในนี่อืมออกต่อไปอีกอันเทาเทาดำทับโต๊ะบัวตายกิ่งไปพุ่นอีกเทาดำไปจับเอาอีกมาทิมนี่นี่แล้วก็อันเท่าเท่าดำมาอันอันปูนร้านมาร้านว่าว่า Laos is sadly not the only country in the world where civilians have to coexist with these weapons. Afghanistan, Iraq, Lebanon, Kosovo. There are over 30 countries and areas in the world that are contaminated by these remnants of war. <laughs> Drops from aircraft or launched by artillery, submunitions spread over their military objectives as well as surrounding civilian areas. Used during a war situation, 5 to 30 percent of submunitions fail to explode on impact, remaining active after the end of the conflict. Okay, we're dealing with a BLU-97, it's a cluster bomb, it was dropped by NATO forces. What happened, because of the condition of this ground, you can see it's pretty soft. Uh, you'll probably find that a lot of these cluster bombs didn't detonate on impact of the ground. So uh, this whole area is probably contaminated with unexploded cl uh, cluster bombs. What are you going to do now? Okay, once again, we're going to have to destroy this bomblet in situation, the slightest movement on this bomblet could cause it to, to explode. Just as with anti-personnel mines, the activities of organizations were not limited to actions on the ground to support the victims. Handicap International started a campaign for the ban of cluster munitions in 2003. So far, 700,000 people have signed its petition against these weapons, which has forced the debate amongst political decision makers. Negotiations began thanks to the support of countries such as Norway. One of the roles of NGOs during conferences is to put across the rights and opinions of affected populations. The voice of victims is heard during different phases of the process, their testimonies reminding political decision makers of the human consequences of these weapons. Anonymous statistics are replaced by human faces, in front of which governments must take their decisions. Branislav Kapitanovic was one of those witnesses, an advocate for the victims of cluster munitions having lost both legs and both hands to this weapon. Branislav took part in the entire process that led to the treaty being signed in Oslo in December 2008. <laughs> Donc suite au, à la tragédie libanaise, euh, les bombardements massifs de bombes à sous-munitions sur le sud Liban, eh bien les Norvégiens ont dit stop. Et ils ont lancé ce processus en février 2007, c'était avant-hier. Et ça c'est la magie de la nouvelle diplomatie, cette, cette alliance entre un pays et quelques pays amis déterminés sur un objectif précis. Cette alliance avec une société civile bien organisée, structurée, sur le modèle du traité d'Ottawa. Well, I think one, one thing about this campaign is that it's been knowledge-based civil society. It's been a, a question of not only doing the lobbying in the streets, getting the public mobilization, getting the media on board, and Handicap International and other organizations around the world have been crucial for that sort of 
political, public mobilization, but this knowledge-based civil society of, of working directly with the diplomats, getting the data, uh, getting the information, being rigorous, and putting it down on paper so people can say, well, here's the evidence, we've got to ban these things. We care, we concern about the real life of the human being. We care about the wireless of the people who are suffering, who are wounded by cluster munitions. For me, always I flick the finger like this. I ask them, please look to me. I injury by interpersonal landmine. Please look to my friend. They uh, got wounded by a cluster bombs. Please ban it, destroy it, don't use it. And looking back to our wounded, give more help, give more support, and give hope and good future to them. Every 90 minutes, a person is killed or wounded by a mine or a cluster bomb somewhere in the world. To make sure that those victims are never forgotten, please support Handicap International.